First Chronicles chapter 26. We're going to read verse number 20. The Bible says, And of the Levites, Ahiah was over the treasures of the house of God and over the treasures of the dedicated things. That's it. That's the message right there. Got it? Let's read it again. Some of you missed it. And of the Levites, Ahiah was over the treasures of the house of God and over the treasures of the dedicated things. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for them young people singing. That was a blessing. Lord, thank you. You're raising up young people that love you, want to serve you. Lord, that's a real thrill and a blessing. Lord, I appreciate it. Lord, I do pray for Miss Vanessa this evening. I pray for her family. Lord, even though it was expected, and her sister had been sick for a long time, Lord, it's still never easy letting them go. So, God, I pray you'd comfort them, help them. You said in the Bible you're the God of all comfort. So, God, I pray you'd comfort them and minister grace. And I pray if there's any in her family that aren't saved, that, Lord, as a result of this, they'd come to the saving knowledge of Christ. God, I pray for Miss Tammy's aunt, Miss Shirley. God, you'd touch her. She's in agony, a lot of pain, misery. But, Lord, she's ready to go. And, God, I pray that, Lord, you'd touch her and your will would be done. I pray you'd strengthen Miss Tammy. I pray for those in the family, Lord, that uh, need to get right with the Lord. And, God, you'd touch their hearts. And, God, they would. God, I do pray, Lord, for others that are sick, you'd touch them. I pray for those that are providentially hindered. God, you'd help them. I do pray, Father, tonight for the revival going on at Cannon Mountain. Brother Jeffrey, I pray that, God, you'd continue to pour it on them. I pray that, God, you'd continue to bless. I pray sinners would continue to get saved. I pray for Brother Jeffrey that, Lord, you would strengthen him and, Lord, you'd give him fresh oil. I do pray for that church. I pray for them folks. They've been sitting in church for four weeks. I know their bodies are getting tired. But, Lord, I pray your presence be so real that, Lord, the things pertaining to the flesh would be put out of their minds. And God, I pray you'd continue to revive. I pray you'd revive that region. And God, I pray it fan throughout our entire land. And I pray great things would be done for the cause of Christ. I pray for our upcoming meeting. God, you'd bless in a powerful and a wonderful way. God, we need revival. We need help. God, I pray we'd see 20-something people saved. I pray we'd see great things happen for the cause of Christ. Uh, I pray for Brother Amos's church and their upcoming meeting. God, you'd bless and you'd help down there. Other meetings going on. God, you'd just breathe on those churches and help. God, I do pray now that you'd help us and Lord, you'd make yourself big through the Word of God. And God, I pray that, Lord, you'd strengthen your people. Lord, uh, you told us not to be weary in well-doing, but yet, Lord, if we're not careful, we'll get weary in well-doing. So, God, I pray you'd strengthen us tonight. You'd edify, instruct us, and encourage the people of God. Uh, Lord, we thank you for the good testimonies, and thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be in church tonight. Now, God, I pray that, Lord... Uh, 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 your will would be done in the heart of each and every one. For is anybody here tonight unsaved, tonight be the night they get born again. I pray you'd use this unworthy vessel. And God, I pray that, Lord, you'd be glorified, and we'll thank you for all that you do. Forgive us where we've sinned and come short of the glory of God, uh, for it's in the wonderful and glorious name of the Lord Jesus we ask it all. Amen. Amen. Uh, 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 we find... Uh, in verse number 26 of First Chronicles, it's one of those chapters uh, when you're doing your Bible reading, you want to skip. Because uh, you're going to find uh, every verse, all it does is mention a bunch of Levites. And it goes on to tell who came from who and what family they're from and all kinds of things. But if we went back to chapter number 23, you'll find where David in his old age makes Solomon king over all of Israel. Uh, you'll find prior to that that David had done everything that he could uh, to gather all the materials for the building uh, 
of the temple of the house of God. Uh, and uh, chapters 24 through chapter 26, uh, we find uh, where Solomon, uh, one of the first things he does is he distributes uh, the Levites uh, in different positions uh, and different ways that they're going to serve uh, as pertaining to the house of God. Uh, if you remember back uh, in the wilderness that God uh, uh, appointed Aaron and Aaron's uh, line to serve him in the house of God. Uh, every high priest had to come from the Levitical priest line. Uh, those that served uh, in and around the temple all had to be Levites. Uh, uh, and we think about that. We think about serving God and living for God. Uh, but if you really study, uh, it's a whole lot bigger deal than we uh, uh, really have come to believe in. So uh, uh, I wanted you to notice a couple things uh, as a way of introduction. Uh, uh, one of the first things that Solomon did is he divided people in what they called orders. Uh, and can I say orders uh, 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 were those who were divided into two categories. They were either porters uh, or they were singers. Uh, uh, can I say the porters were the ones uh, who served at the gates, uh, 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 the gates leading into the house of God. Uh, can I say that was a big deal? Uh, if you was one who served at the gate, uh, you made certain people uh, were coming in the right gate. Uh, they were of the right tribe to come into that gate. Uh, you directed on, uh, them where they were to go, uh, how they were to serve. Uh, uh, you were a very important person. You was the first faces uh, anybody saw when they came to the house of God. Uh, I'm thankful we've got men that will stand back there uh, and greet folks uh, and uh, welcome folks when they come to the house of God. Uh, never lose sight of how big a deal that is. Uh, uh, when people come to church, uh, 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 they're looking, uh, 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 they might be a little apprehensive. Uh, 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 Miss uh, Noreen, I tell you, she drove by here many a time. Times, uh, uh, thinking I can't go there uh, I'm not good enough to go there uh, but something happened when she came uh, somebody made her feel welcome uh, others made her feel welcome uh, here several years later she's sitting there serving God in the house of God uh, uh, listen uh, when lost people come to church uh, they don't know what to expect uh, uh, they don't know how they're going to be treated uh, and if they see uh, a warm face uh, and a friendly person uh, welcoming them uh, and directing them uh, into the sanctuary that's a big deal uh, we find that porters were a big deal. And then there were singers. Did you enjoy the good singing tonight? Can I say that there were certain ones of the Levites uh, uh, that were directed to sing and play instruments uh, and they had certain songs to sing uh, that was all important when it came to worship. Uh, now can I say, uh, 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 between the porters uh, and the singers, uh, the number was 8,000. Told you it's a lot bigger deal than what we think when we think about serving God. There were 8,000 that were part of the orders. Not only were there the orders, there were the officers. Now we have officers in our church. Uh, 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 we have uh, 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 the pastor. We have deacons. Uh, those are the two officers uh, outlined in the New Testament for the church, uh, the local church. Uh, uh, then we have folks that serve uh, as trustees. Uh, and we have folks that serve in other capacities. Uh, uh, but can I say, uh, uh, in the temple, uh, the officers uh, were the ones that stood up for the business or judicial needs uh, of the house of God. Uh, uh, listen, uh, they were given to the law uh, and they were given for the business transactions. Uh, when we think of church, uh, we think about worship. Uh, we think about coming, hearing singing, uh, hearing preaching. Uh, we think about assembly with the uh, people of God and fellowshipping uh, and enjoying. Uh, we think about the spiritual uh, very little do we ever think about the business side. Uh, uh, the state of Kentucky looks at the Annual Baptist Church uh, as a business, uh, as a non-profit corporation uh, with the state. Uh, uh, they can care less about the spiritual side. Uh, that means nothing to them. Uh, that's why the governor said we were non-essential. Uh, hey, what I want to tell you, uh, the most essential place on the planet uh, is the house of God, uh, where the word of God is preached, uh, where people can hear what thus saith the Lord. Uh, there's nothing more important than God's government, uh, his local church on this earth. Uh, 
Can I say, yeah, there is a business side. We do collect offerings for the business side. We got to keep the lights on. We got to keep the grounds maintained. Uh, we got to keep the building maintained. Uh, we got to pay the electric bill and the gas bill. Uh, 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 we have other needs and other things. Uh, and the business side, uh, 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 there's a whole lot that goes into that. Uh, matter of fact, Brother Thad and Miss Tammy spend a lot of hours while you're at the restaurant making sure the business side is taken care of. Our trustees make sure the business side is taken care of. Well, the officers who took care of the business and judicial needs uh, in the house of God uh, numbered 6,000 men. So you had 8,000 porters and singers and 6,000 officers. That's 14,000 right there serving in the house of God. And then the the third uh, 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 division that Solomon put them in was the obligated ones. Now the obligated ones were those who maintained and governed the work of the house of God. They made sure everything was where it was supposed to be uh, so when it was time to worship, everything was in order. They were just obligated. Make sure everything was taken care of. Now, we have some folks that are obligators. Huh? Listen, there's never a time that I don't put this mic on that we ever have a problem where the batteries don't work. Do you know how many churches I go and preach in and, and you get up to preach and the, the mic goes out? Have you ever seen that happen here? You know why? We have somebody obligated. Every service he checks, make sure the batteries are good. He makes sure that these buttons, whatever they do, they're doing it. Huh? When I come in, I put this mic on. It's never a thought in my mind. I wonder if that thing's going to work. You know why? Because Brother Randy's obligated to make that work. Huh? Brother Randy will tell you, uh, as far as a sound man goes, uh, he can't hear the different tones in people singing. When that girl got up there and sang, he couldn't tell if Kinsey was louder than, uh, than Lexi or if Aiden was louder than uh, uh, Daniel. He couldn't tell you any of that stuff. But one thing he does, he makes certain everything works. Hmm? Uh, never a time does the mics not work, except when he's on vacation. Every time he's on vacation, we got a problem. You're never allowed to go on vacation anymore. Huh? Why? He's obligated. Huh? He takes pride. But he's not the only one. We have folks who are obligated. Make certain everything is where it's supposed to be uh, and how it's supposed to be. You come in to worship. Uh, most of the time, people never give any thought about the batteries in the mic. Uh, most of the time, people never give any thought to other Bella to uh, make sure the preacher's got his water where it's supposed to be. Uh, uh, but somebody's obligated to have that water there. I take that back. Colt the other day said, Preacher, got water up there? Because he's sitting over here. He couldn't see it. Uh, he wanted to make sure. Uh, 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 but there are folks uh, make certain that the tissues are in the tissue boxes. Uh, make sure there's toilet paper in the bathrooms. Uh, uh, make sure everything's clean. Uh, make sure everything's comfortable. Uh, so when you come in, uh, you don't have to worry about anything other than worship and hearing from heaven. Uh, can I say, uh, in the obligated, those who maintained and governed the work of the house of God, there were 10,000. So there was 24,000 Levites who just served. Now let's get to our text verse. The Bible says, And of the Levites, Ahijah, or Ahiah, was over the treasures of the house of God and over the treasures of the dedicated things. I'm going to preach for just a few minutes out of that verse where it said he was over the treasures and over the treasure. I want to preach on over and over. Over and over. And can I say that Ahia was one of these obligated guys. 
there's some things about him in this verse, and I don't know why, but I was reading this the other day, and something said, there's something about that fella. Now you read the rest of it, it tells where they came from, it tells what they're doing. This guy is kind of out here on an island. It says, Ahia was over the treasures of the house of God and over the treasures of the dedicated things. Can I say, first of all, I want you to notice that he's the dedicated one. Look what it says. And of the Levites, Ahia. He's a dedicated one. He is of the Levites. There's never been, Brother Ron, any doubt in his mind from the time he could think on his own that he wasn't a Levite, and the Levites were on this planet for one reason, and that was to serve the house of God. Now, Brother Tony, he didn't know growing up what he would do in the service of the house of God, but he was just a, a Levite, uh, and he's a dedicated one, uh, and he must have been really dedicated, Brother Adrian, uh, because they placed him uh, over the treasures of the house of God uh, and over the treasures of the dedicated things. Uh, uh, this man uh, has dedicated his life uh, to serving the Lord. Uh, can I say there's nothing that can be better said of you uh, than that you've dedicated your life uh, to serving the Lord. Uh, hey, when was the last time uh, you just rededicated your life? Uh, I just laid it on the line. Uh, I'm going to live my life uh, to please the Lord uh, and to serve the Lord. Uh, hey, if it's all said and done, uh, if the only thing that can ever be said about me uh, is that he served the Lord, uh, what greater thing can be said uh, that you served the Lord? Uh, what higher calling could you ever have uh, than you're a servant uh, of the Lord? Uh, he's the King of kings, uh, Lord of lords. Uh, he's the master. Uh, we don't deserve uh, anything from him uh, but to be able to serve him uh, and give back to him uh, and to honor him with our lives. What a blessing. Uh, he's a dedicated one. Now, I know it's Wednesday night, and I know most of the time on Wednesday night you're pretty dedicated. But are you more than just dedicated to come to church? Are you dedicated to serve the Lord? He's a dedicated one. Can I say this? He's not only the dedicated one, he's the deserving one, Brother Phil. The Bible says, and of the Levites, Ahiah. Now you that have been around for a while, you know I like something about the names of the people in the Bible. There's a whole study on that. And over the years, I've studied it a lot. Because see, I know that if by the time they was 30 years of age, if their character did not fit their name, they would change their name. That's why Saul of Tarsus was changed to Paul. Because he was no longer Saul. He became a new creature in Christ Jesus. But can I say that if somebody's character didn't fit their name, they'd change their name. So their names are important. And if we study what their names mean, it would tell us something about the individual. And so I've got several volumes of books uh, that'll let me know what their names mean. So as I'm reading this, and this verse jumped out to me, I'm thinking, Ahia. I'm not familiar with that name. You familiar? I know you're retired. Do you work with any Ahias down there at Mazak? No, I didn't think so. Uh, you know, I, I don't remember any Ahias, the prophets, or the minor prophets, any Ahias that were mighty men of valor. Matter of fact, the only Ahia that I can remember, recall of memories when I read this guy. So I got to digging. You know what I found? Nothing. 
I got a pretty expensive library. I don't do a lot of things online because a lot of things online, you don't know if you can trust it. But when I look at a set of commentaries that's 150 years old, I know it's uh, probably a little trustworthy. And I've got going on 30 different sets of commentaries. So when I started looking for this dude's name, I did a little digging. And every time I found no mention of him, I did a little more digging. And this is what one old writer had to say. No identity is ascribed to him. Now I've said he's the deserving one. John the Baptist said it this way. I must decrease and he must increase. This guy's decreased so much, nobody even ascribes anything to what his name means. He has no identity. You know what his identity is? Servant of the Most High. That's what he is. He's a servant. Nobody knows anything about him. Uh, there's nothing ascribed to him. Uh, and the Holy Ghost said this to me. Uh, to be somebody, you must become a nobody. Uh, and him being deserving, uh, he became a nobody. Uh, and the Lord became everything. Uh, I said he's deserving uh, because uh, everything about him said uh, not I, uh, but Christ that liveth in me. Uh, hey, everything was about the Lord uh, and not about Him. Uh, we live in a day and age where everybody wants a pat on the back. We live in a day and age uh, where people think they make themselves look better by tearing somebody else down. Uh, we live in a day and age uh, uh, where preachers... Uh, Want everybody to be known about the, know about them. Uh, everybody's interested in being seen. Uh, not this fella. Uh, he was a nobody. Uh, yet it meant something to God because God recorded him in the Bible. Uh, and he must have been a pretty good nobody because uh, he's over uh, the treasures uh, of the house of God uh, and the treasures uh, of the dedicated thing. Uh, hey, uh, Here's how you get big in God's economy. Uh, get little. Uh, the li more little you get, uh, the bigger God gets. Uh, and the more God gets glory from your life. Uh, it's, a good day, it's a good day in your life when you figure out it's not about you. But it's about the Lord. And that's who this guy is. He's a deserving one because he's a nobody. Hmm? It was an old building. I only preached that message one time. I need to dig it out. Got a message on the feller in the cellar. Remember that message? The feller in the cellar. He was a guy, Brother Ron, down in the cellar of the house of God. And all he did was stamp out the oil from the olives to make sure there was oil in the lamps upstairs. The God told the children of Israel the light was to never go out in the house of God. Uh, that feller in the cellar, nobody knew him. Nobody knew anything about him. Uh, nobody saw him. Uh, but everybody uh, was blessed by what he did. Uh, and it'd be a good day in our life uh, when we don't care if anybody ever knows our name. Uh, if nobody ever sees what we do in secret in our prayer closets. Uh, what we do in secret for the glory of God. Uh, but folks start seeing openly God answering prayer. Uh, and God blessing in spite of what we're doing in the cellar, my dear friends. He's a dedicated one. He's a deserving one. Can I say something else about this guy? Notice his dignity in serving. The Bible says two times, Ahiah was over the treasures of the house of God, and he's over the treasures of the dedicated things. Notice the dignity in serving. That word over means above in authority means the right or power of superintending or governing. He's been placed over. He's been put in a position of authority. He is superintending and governing uh, uh, the treasures of the house of God uh, and the treasures of the dedicated things. Uh, he has a dignified position because he was a nobody. Hmm? 
Huh? It amazes me. Let me go back and talk to my friend, Brother Adrian. I'm not doing because he needs to hear me, but I'm doing because I need to exercise. My best friend in high school, he was what we would call today a tool. Uh, uh, his tool, a friend of mine, huh? he went four years of college to get a degree. He got out of college, couldn't get a job because he got a degree in something you couldn't get a job in. Uh, that's a tool. Well, most of you know my story. I got hurt, so I didn't get to go and play professional baseball. I had too much pride to go to college and sit the bench and play baseball. So I didn't go to college. I went to work. So I got out of college. He couldn't get a job. So I said, I can get you a job. Huh? I didn't have a dignified job. I was a men's shoe salesman. But that was pretty good money in selling men's shoes. There were some shoes we sold was eight hundred dollars a pair. That's big money now, and I'm talking thirty-five years ago, forty years ago. Lord have mercy, I'm old. But I made pretty good money selling shoes. Oh, get too much pride to sell shoes. So he got a title. He made a third of the money I made, but he had a title. Can I say there's some people, all they want's a title. Here you go. You're the executive pew warmer. Give me a title so I can feel important. This guy was a nobody, but God placed him in a dignified position. Hmm? He wasn't interested in a title. He was interested in pleasing the Lord. And in pleasing the Lord, the Lord was pleased with him. And the Lord put him in a place where other people came under his authority. Listen, God will never put you in a position of authority until you learn to submit to authority. Hmm? So we find he's a dedicated one. He's the deserving one. He has dignity in serving. And by the way, there is nothing like serving the Lord and it doesn't matter what the world thinks of you God takes note of your service and one of these days when he settles the score you'll find out there's dignity in serving the Lord can I say this tonight notice not only the dignity in serving notice the daily things now I'm going to break this down to you when I get done, you're going to understand my title. But look at the daily things. The Bible says that ah Ahiah was over the treasures of the house of God. Now, how many of you, when you think of that, you think of treasures, you think of gold and silver? I do. I mean, that's treasures. Isn't that, isn't that treasures? I mean, they had silver bowls that they used in worship and they had a golden candlestick and they had things in the house of God that was priceless by their means but that's not what it's talking about the treasures of the house of God were the things for daily ministration let me tell you what the treasures were they were the vessels used in worship those, those bowls and basins and candlesticks and table show bread he had to govern over the vessels used in worship but he also the treasures of the house of God the daily things included the garments of the priest he had to make certain that they were in the right place and ready to be put on when the high priest needed them when the other priest uh, needed their garments he made certain that the garments were where they were supposed to be we don't think about that by the way, this is it in my notes. Brother Ray, if those priests did not have on the right garments, God did not bless the house of God. Brother Phil, if the high priest, when once a year 
he slew that lamb that had been put up for 14 days and he took that blood in the high priest if he didn't have on his high priest garments uh, if he didn't have that garment uh, with the breastplate of righteousness uh, and all those 12 uh, uh, stones represent the 12 tribes of the children of Israel if he didn't have his mitre on he didn't have, if he wasn't dressed right it cost him his life can I say this without being ugly? It does matter how you appear when you come to the house of God. If you look like the world, God's not going to bless. We're not in the world tonight. We're on holy ground. Well, it's not in my notes, but that didn't cost you anything. Can I say that he also, part of the daily things, the treasures of the house of God, was the flower for sacrifice. And I say they used flour in making the sacrifice. Had to make sure the flour was there. Can I say this? Also the oil for the lamps and the oil used in sacrifices. That was treasures for the house of God. Can I say oil was one of the greatest commodities of the day? If you owned a vineyard, an olive vineyard, and you had olives and you had oil, you was a wealthy person. They used oil for everything. They used it for medicine. Uh, it mollified wounds. Uh, uh, they used it for their complexion. Uh, they used it for their makeup. Uh, uh, they used it in sacrifice. Uh, they used it, as I said earlier, keeping the lights on. Uh, they used it in their own personal lamps. Uh, oil was a great commodity. It was a great treasure. And there was treasure for the house of God was oil. Can I say the spices for sacrifice? Oh, go back and study uh, 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 how the oil was made and the spices that were put in uh, 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 the oil and all those things uh, uh, used in worship. Uh, uh, those were treasures and those spices uh, just weren't hanging around. They had to go far and wide uh, uh, to get the right spices and have those spices uh, in place. Uh, daily things. Uh, also the incense offered on the altar of incense. All those things uh, were part of the daily Things, the treasures of the house of God. We see the daily things. But then notice the dedicated things. He was over the dedicated things. Those are the things that people commissioned to the house of God. The dedicated things uh, are the treasures that uh, encompassed, uh, first of all, the tithes of the people. The people brought their tithe into the storehouse that was dedicated. It was transferred from those people and dedicated to the house of God. They gave it to God. It's part of the dedicated things. He was over that. Also, the sacrifices brought to the house of God. Certain uh, uh, feasts, I, I, I didn't have time to go into the certain feasts and certain things. Sometimes they came to the house of God, they had to bring turtle doves. Uh, sometimes they brought a lamb. Uh, sometimes they brought a ram. Uh, sometimes they brought a bullock. Uh, those things that they brought uh, and they gave uh, uh, for the worship, the house of God, those were dedicated things. Uh, the sacrifices, the tithes. Not only that, the treasures that had been dedicated by kings. Kings had dedicated certain treasures for the house of God. Those things were dedicated things. And then the spoils of war that were given to the house of God were dedicated things. Look down at verse number 27. Look what it says. Uh, uh, out of the spoils won in battles did they, did they dedicate to maintain the house of the Lord. Every time Israel went out and won a battle, uh, uh, start back uh, uh, years ago with Abraham uh, and the battle of the kings when he met Melchizedek. Uh, he paid a tithe of the spoils of the war uh, and it wasn't even a, a commandment of God yet. Uh, it was just right to do. Uh, and every king uh, that went and won a battle brought the spoils back. Uh, they dedicated certain poil, spoils to the house of God. Uh, those were the dedicated. Now, let's read our text first again. I'm about done. And of the Levites, Ahiah, was over the treasures of the house of God and over the treasures of the dedicated things. We see he's the dedicated one, the deserving one. We see dignity and service. We see the daily things. We see the dedicated things. Listen to me, my dear friends. We have been made kings and priests in Christ Jesus. We are to daily keep ourselves before the Lord. 
We are to daily talk to the Lord. We are to daily let the Lord talk to us from the Word of God. We are to keep our vessel uh, to be a vessel of honor, not of dishonor. Uh, uh, we are to always be ready to be used for the house of God. We have daily sacrifice. Paul said he died daily. Uh, we have to daily keep our vessel uh, where the Lord will be pleased with it. Uh, then we have dedicated things. Uh, uh, when we come to the house of God, uh, we get to bring things to the house of God. Uh, we get to worship. We get to give an offering. Uh, uh, we get to praise the Lord. Uh, uh, we get to dedicate things back to God who's been good to us. Now, I said the titles over and over. God has assigned each of us a place in the work of God. If you're a member of the Manual Baptist Church, you are important to this local assembly. And you are part of the body of Christ. And you have a place. God has given you a place in this church. You may not be the pastor. There's only one. You may not uh, uh, be a singer. You may not be a deacon. You may not be a trustee. You may not be the treasurer. You may not have a title. Uh, 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 but you have a place in the work of God. Regardless of our administration, uh, we're to serve the Lord with due diligence. Here it is. Over and over. Uh, 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 to the glory of God. Despite uh, how mundane uh, or how uninspiring uh, our task may really be. Listen. There's no glory in cleaning toilets in man's eyes but there's in God's eyes I'm glad people clean the toilets huh and I imagine and I know who do, does clean the toilets and I know why they clean the toilets they, th they look at it as an honor to serve the Lord but can I say man don't think much of that that's all you do is clean the toilets they do it to the honor and glory of God. Right. And when we come to church, I'm sure glad we got clean toilets. Hmm? Huh? Listen, mowing the grass is not something that is all and inspiring to the world. You mow the grass at church? Oh, yeah. But I dare say you find another church whose grass looks as good as our church's grass looks. Hmm? You plant the flowers and you keep the flowers, you put mulch down, you run a vacuum sweeper, you go to church three times a week, you give a tenth of all your income to the church, plus an offering, plus a mission offering, plus you do that? Are you crazy? The world doesn't think much. And you may not get many pats on the back. You may not have a big fancy title but you do matter to God and you do matter to our church and my dear friends here's the message over and over and over and over just keep doing it Amen. just keep staying in your place keep doing what you're supposed to do keep being what God would have you to be God's placed you where he's placed you for right now for such a time as this so just keep doing it over and over and over. The world may not understand. Your family may not understand. Uh, even times your flesh gets tired of doing it uh, and you think nobody cares. Uh, there's one seated at the right hand of the throne of God uh, who's coming back for his church. Uh, he cares. Uh, he's taking note uh, just over uh, and over uh, and over. Keep being faithful. Uh, hey, keep being a nobody for Jesus. Uh, just be dedicated. Uh, I just uh, let him be the one uh, who'll make you dignified one day. Uh, let him be the one that tells everybody you're the deserving one. Uh, I know that in us, in this flesh, no, it dwelleth no good thing. Uh, but God, uh, he indwelled us when he saves us. Uh, he robed us in his righteousness. Uh, we've been justified by faith. Uh, and when he looks at us, uh, he don't see what we were. Uh, he sees what we are in him. Um, uh, a joint heir to the throne of Christ uh, just keep doing uh, what you're doing uh, it matters uh, God's taking note uh, 
Others are saying, uh, how much you love the Lord. Uh, just keep doing it uh, over uh, and over uh, until Jesus comes, my dear friends. I've told you, I'm busier at 60 than it was 40. Now, I like to say it's getting easier preaching like this than it was almost four decades ago when I started. But I don't jump on pews anymore. Not because inside I don't want to, but that's a big jump nowadays. Ugh. And when I land, there's something about landing. But all I know to do is just to keep doing what he's called me to do and just do it the best that I can do it over and over. That's all I know to do. It's been nice this month. I haven't had any trips. But I'll be honest with you, I've been recovering because April put a hurting on me. But can I say... The next one I get, I'm going to go and give it all I got. Every time I come in here, I try to give it all I got. Because one day I'm going to stand before him. And I don't really care that anybody else knows me. But I want him to be pleased. And he said, you just kept doing it over and over and over. I was an only child. My daughter-in-law is leaving right now. She's trying to put a lot of pressure on Christian in the years to come. She don't want Ella to be an only child. I said, what's wrong with that? She said, look, there's the evidence. Uh, being an only child, you have a vivid imagination. I can identify with Owen. He's got, he's got an imagination that's out of this world. I mean, he talks in planes that nobody else understands. Huh? Because he's thinking out there all the time. Well, he's not an only child. He wishes he was. Fred quit beating up on him. Huh? He said them bruises are from a dog. I know better than that. You's mean to him. That's your little brother. I know better than that. You mean to him. Mama kick your tail, huh? That's her baby. Huh? But can I say this? Being an only child. I didn't have a lot of people to play with, you know, very often. So you invent stuff. But one thing I used to do, if you know me, you can ask my Aunt Lynn, I love to play ball. And I, for hours, Brother Clint, would take a rubber ball and throw it up against a brick wall and catch it. Throw it, see how far I could make my range. Throw it, throw it, and throw it over and over and over. When I got off the field, nothing got by me. One newspaper writer said this. I got the article. He said, watching me play was like watching poetry in motion. You know why? Because when nobody else was looking, nobody else was around. Over and over and over, I did something that was meaningless to everybody else but it made me who I was. Just keep doing over and over and over your service for God, whether anybody else is watching, whether somebody else thinks it's meaningless, just over and over and over. And when the great shepherd, like David the shepherd boy, reaches in his shepherd's bag to pull out a stone to take down a giant, he just might pull you out because you can be trusted because over and over and over the water 
that was in that stream that knocked all the rough edges off that stone. When David the shepherd reached down there and grabbed that stone, put it in his shepherd's bag, uh, hey, the Lord uh, threw you over and over and over and the mundaneness is knocking the rough edges off, uh, knocking the things off that don't matter. Uh, and when he reaches in uh, and picks you up, uh, he might use you uh, to win the next Billy Sunday to God. Uh, I might use you uh, to bring down the next giant. Uh, might use you uh, to sing the next song that brings the glory down. Uh, just keep doing what you're doing over and over for the glory of God. Because it does matter. So tonight, are you the dedicated one? Are you the one that the Lord looks at and says, that's the dignified one? Are you the deserving one? Are you just keeping up with the daily things are you keeping up with the dedicated things are you allowing God to see how much you love him because over and over you just do what you can for his glory tonight maybe you need to come rededicate yourself to him tonight you might need to come say thank you Lord that you'd use somebody like me Tonight, maybe you need to come and just tell him you love him. And you're glad that you're a nobody for him. I don't know. But all I know is just keep doing over and over till Jesus puts his great hand of grace on you and uses you for his glory. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, you come. Brother Daniel, you come. God spoke to your heart. We're picking out a song. You let God have His way. Lord, there's such a sweet spirit in here right now. I'd get in on it if you're not. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Have your way in this invitation. Thank you for using a wretch like me. Father, bless. We'll bless you for it. Jesus' name. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.